Hi guys, welcome back to Bookish Weekend. My name is Brooke and today we are doing the Campfire Book Tag. So I was tagged by Nicole over at A Beautiful Chaos of Books to do this tag a long time ago. I am so sorry that I am only just getting to it now, um, but I've had videos that I've only been up. My Yalk stuff, my wrap ups and all of that stuff. But I am currently planning a bunch of videos that are going to take um, a while to do a lot of pre-filming and a lot of planning and a lot of reading in preparation for those videos. And so um, thinking about what to film today, I wasn't quite sure what to do and then I remembered I had this tag to do so it's a perfect time to do it for myself and this channel. I am very excited with the videos that are coming up though so please 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 um, subscribe and you will be also enjoy them hopefully. They'll be coming up in the next few months. Um, or weeks even. Depends how long they take me. I don't know yet. The original creators tag I'll link down below. I'll find out who they are for you. Link them below. Check them out. I'll link Nicole's video down below. Check her out as well. She is amazing. Um, I'd like to thank you all for getting me to 100 subscribers. I am so happy. Um, you don't understand. I appreciate it all so, so much. I appreciate it so, so much. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Um... If you didn't know, I am doing a giveaway over on my Twitter uh, to celebrate, so go check that out. All the links will be down below as well, but let's get straight into the tag. So the theme, the theme of this tag is sort of like, you're camping, and there's different questions related to that. It makes sense as you go along, trust me. Um, but yeah, let's get straight into the questions. So question number one is build a tent, a book that you had to read but ended up being a drag. And I feel like I'm going to get so much hate for this. Actually, I have two really unpopular things in this one. But I'm only going to go for one because I don't want to be killed just yet. So the book I've chosen for this question is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. And this book is so tattered and worn. But I had to read this two years ago for my English GCSE, which are exams you take when you're 16 in the UK. I'm sure you all know what this book's about. This book follows... Oh, I forgot what her name is. Scout. This book follows Scout and her father Atticus is the lawyer for a black man that's been accused of raping two white women and it's a coming of age story and it's about the prejudice in the 1950s and the racism and it's got a great message but it was just so boring like nothing happens until like the last five chapters i swear or at least i don't remember anything happening i know so many people love this book and i wish i could love it like i know tj reads this is TJ Reads the Stars is doing a giveaway, not giveaway, a read along for this book so I might participate in and give this book another go. But I just remember hating it so much I struggled to get through this book. I did read it um, and I did finish it but we were expected to read it about five times I think to learn it and understand it. I read it once I couldn't get myself to read it again. I don't know how I passed that exam to be honest with you I could not get myself to even look at this book when I had to. I just hated it so much. I am sorry for that. Um, I wish I could love it. Um, and if you are thinking about picking up, then do because most people love this. I think I am in the minority for this book. But I just, it was just such a drag. The next question is Build a Fire, a book you were proud of finishing. And for this one, I have chosen Milgram to Authority by Stanley Milgram. This is a non fiction book written by the psychologist Milgram. Um, who did the obedience um, to authority <laughs> um, experiment. Um, I learned about this study for A Level Psychology and I decided to pick up this book to gain a further understanding and I did find that study really interesting so I wanted to learn more. Um, I am studying psychology at uni still in September so I um, do find this sort of stuff really interesting. And it just follows all the different experiments that he did and the results and the conclusions. I think he did like 30 <laughs> different versions of this experiment to be honest. Um, basically this experiment he got, basically he got a volunteer to pretend that they were the learner and he had someone who was the um, participant of the study who was the teacher. The learner was in a room um, wired up and the teacher had to ask them matched pairs questions so they would have one word asked to them and then they'd have to match with a certain other word and if they got it wrong they were electrocuted by the teacher they weren't actually electrocuted but the teacher thought they were being electrocuted and it was just to see how far they would go up on 
the electrocution um, shock machine um, and what would happen. It's a really interesting study. I do highly recommend that you look it up or uh, read this book if you're interested in that topic. Um, but yeah, I'm really proud of reading this book because it's like the first proper non-fiction book I've read. Um, like, it's a proper, proper book, you know, and I did find it really interesting. The last bit where it was the application and the overview was just boring as heck, but the studies itself was really interesting. But yeah, I was really proud of reading this because I wasn't expecting to finish it. Um, I thought I'd get bored halfway through, but I did finish it, and yeah, that makes me super happy. The next question is Toasted Marshmallows, a sweet book that you can help devour. And for this one I have chosen Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I read this book a few years ago. Um, I read it super quickly for the speed that I normally read books at that time. I think I read it in four days, um, which was surprising for the thickness of this book and how fast I normally read books. I know that's not very quick to some people, but at the time it was quick for me, okay, don't judge. <laughs> um, but I'm sure you all know what this book's about. This book follows Kath and she is a fan fiction writer and she's sort of shy and quiet and reserved compared to her twin sister who's outgoing. Um, but when they go to uni, Kath's forced out of her shell a little bit and she ends up meeting this boy called Levi and just is about self-growth, trying new things and reaching new people and it's just so sweet, so good. I love the characters. I love the- oh, actually Carry On by Rainbow Rowell could have been used for this question. I love that book so much more when I think of that, um, which is the fan fiction from this book. But yeah, it was so sweet. I devoured it. Everyone needs to pick up this book, especially if you're starting uni soon. Yes. Question four is Gone Fishing, a book that had you hooked from the first chapter. My head chalks up. You meant to be asleep. That's a bit peculiar. Um, Gone Fishing, a book that had you hooked from the first chapter, and for this one I have chosen The Usable Way. I can never say that title. These Rebel Waves by Sarah Rash, and this is a pirate book. I got this ARC copy from Harper360, so thank you very much, Dan, for sending me this. I will be writing a review up on my blog, links down below, go check it out. Um, it's not up yet, but go check my blog out is what I meant. That makes no sense. Um, this book is sort of a piratey book. It follows three characters, um, Adelona, who is a soldier, and she had previously fought for the revolution of her country, Grace Larray. Yeah, Grace Larray from the Agridians, which is a country ruled by religion. And one day when the Agridian ambassador goes missing, she um, helps a pirate named Vex break up prison to go and find him. Our next character is Devereux Bell, also known as Vex, and he is a pirate. Um, and when he gets caught up, um, when he gets caught pickpocketing Adelina, he gets imprisoned. Adelina goes for him to help to find um, this Agridian ambassador. And then there is Bennett, and he is a Agridian prince, but he is a heretic, and he just doesn't want anyone to find out that he is a heretic prince because that will lead to his death. But when his dad, the king, um, asks for him to use band magic to find a cure for illness. He starts to realise things aren't as they seem and starts to question the walling of his country and it's just such a good book. It is so gripping. From the first chapter I wanted to read more and even when I finished it I wanted more and it is the first book of a duology so thankfully we will be getting more at some point, probably like for next year or something. Um, the characters were so lovable. I just, it was so good. It reminded me why I loved reading and why I loved fantasy so much and I just, I love pirates, I love boats, stories set on boats and water and just, ah, I loved it. I loved it, loved it, loved it. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars and this book did come out on the 7th of this month so it is out now, you can go pick it up and I highly recommend you do, I can't sing the praises of this book enough. Go pick it up, please. Next question is um, Skipping Rocks, a book or series that you DNF'd, and for this one I'm going to go with the Shatter Me series, Fighter Hero Murphy. I loved this book, I can't actually remember what I gave it. I gave this book four stars, as far as Juliet, and she is in some sort of institution because her touch kills people. Um, but one day she is f freaks out and starts joins the revolution or something. I don't actually remember what happened in this book. Um, I just remember really enjoying it. But the reason I am not finishing this series is actually quite 
nothing to do with the book, it's just quite a personal reason. 2016, I had a lot going on. Um, it wasn't a great year for me, I had just so much going on, I was in such a bad mental space and something happened, something bad happened on a particular day when these books actually arrived in the post and it's one of the reasons why I went and pick up the Darkest Minds because they were also the books that are in this post um, box, in this mailbox um, and I just remember the next day everything sort of like broke and I was just sat on the sofa all day crying um, reading this book to try and distract myself um, and it worked, it was great, I could read it, I read it in a day, I flew through it um, it just reminds me of that day constantly and I don't really want to be reminded of that so I don't think I'm going to be picking up the rest of the series as much as I did enjoy it because I don't want to be reminded of that constantly while I'm trying to read a book that I'm meant to be enjoying so that's why I'm not going to continue this series I've got a lot deeper than you all are expecting Number 6 is Campfire Song, a book that you will always find in singing its praise and for this book, it was only right that I chose this one because the amount of times I've talked about it on this channel so far is crazy and so I have chosen Grace and Fear by Tracy Banghart If you haven't heard about me talking about this book, where have you been? Um, this book follows Serena and Nomi and they are in a world where women have no rights um, They are the property of their husband or their father and there are also things called graces and these are the property of the king or the heirs to sort of portray the perfect woman and Serena has always wanted to be a grace, she's always been training to be a grace because she thinks that's the way to protect herself and her sister and to have a best life possible but Nomi's always been a little bit rebellious um, and doesn't quite understand why it should be this way and is always questioning the norm so one day when the grace trials are happening both girls uh, end up in their, like the castle with the air and things don't go to plan they realise not everything as it seems and they start they start questioning the ruling of their country and why things are as they are so I love this book, it was a feminist fantasy that I needed I gave it 5 out of 5 stars I am constantly talking about it I can't wait for the sequel I'm just... the amount of times I've talked about this book is insane so Number 7 is The Night Sky, a book that made you think deeply about an aspect in the world and for this one I've chosen Heretics Anonymous by Katie Henry This is another advanced readers copy that I got given, no, I got sent to by Harper360 so thanks, so thanks again to them However this book is out now, it came out on the 7th like these several ways so you can go pick it up um, This book is funny, this book is hilarious and entertaining and fun but it is also quite deep in parts and does get you thinking. This book follows Michael and he is an atheist and when he is sent to St. Clair's, a Catholic school, he is looking for another non-believer like him. He feels a bit left out. It is the worst thing that could ever possibly happen to him and he thinks he has found a fellow non-believer in, in a girl called Lucy when she questions a nun um, about the saints and that a well-behaved girl, well-behaved woman never made history and the nun says yes they did but she's like no have you even learned about our saints basically and so he tries to befriend her but it turns out that Lucy is a catholic and not only is she a catholic she actually wants to be a priest but she takes him to join this group called Heretics Anonymous where other people that don't quite fit the catholic school system join we have let read the, the descriptions of all the different members here so we have Avi, so we have Lucy an outspoken feminist but also catholic Avi, a Jewish and gay. Avi can be Jewish and gay. Max can be can wear whatever he wants. Uh, who is a Unitari Unitarian? I don't know how to say it. Eden um, basically is a pagan. I can't remember the long name for her religion, um, but it is very similar to paganism. It might be under the umbrella term of paganism. And so this book does focus heavily on religion and different religions and how they can coexist peacefully and what they mean to each and everyone and I did write a um, book review on my blog, so I'll link it down below and it actually discusses my thoughts on religion in that blog, blog post um, but yeah, it did make me think about my own beliefs I am an atheist um, about other people's beliefs religion as a whole um, different religions and stuff like that so this book definitely did get me thinking a lot finally, number 8, The Teardown a book that's ending was bittersweet and for this one I'm going to have to choose Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows by J.K. Rowling this is the 7th and final book in the Harry Potter series If you, everyone knows what Harry Potter is so I'm not going to go into explaining what that's about 
but I had to do this book because I love Harry Potter so much. I grew up with the movies, I read the books last year, um, I marathoned them. I just, the books are amazing, the films are amazing, the characters are amazing, the story is amazing. I love this book with all my heart. I love the series with every fibre of my being. Um, it's just one of the best things, I'm not gonna lie, I'm such a Potterhead. Um, but this book is the final book and that's why it's so bittersweet because it is so nice to see a conclusion to a book that you love and it's nice to see like the evil defeated and the characters grow and develop and conclude but it's bitter because it's the final book in a series that I never want to end and because of all the deaths that are in it, all of the um, sadness and destruction that happens in this book is so sad um, but um, so yeah, that's why I chose this book. I'm sure most of you can agree with me on that one. Who doesn't love Harry Potter, eh? So that's it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. Um, all my links and everything will also be done there, so go check them out. With Nicole's video and the creator's video of this tag. What is my hat doing? Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!